Pile foundation is the best choice for heavy loaded structures and in cases where poor soil conditions are found at a shallow depth. However, failure of this foundation will result in catastrophic damages or even being left as a monument. Pile foundations may fail due to different reasons. Sometimes, the failure of the foundation is not due to the foundation structure itself, but it could be due to the failure of the ground where the foundation is rested. Therefore, lots of pile testings have been introduced to help the engineers uncovering the potential of the soil as well as the capacity of the pile. One of the best ways to ensure the structural and geotechnical soundness of a pile is to apply the compression load onto the pile so that the behavior and the settlement of other piles can be predicted. The name of the test meant to achieve these objectives is Maintain Load Test. My name is Amirul Hakim bin Zulkifli, one of Johan's trainee engineers from University Malaya. And today, I will explain to you the mysteries behind Maintain Load Test by Reaction and Commented. The usual procedure of maintain load test or MLT is to create the load in stages until the proposed working load is reached and then to unload and to leave the load off until the rise or rebound substantially ceases. In order to determine the ultimate load the pile can support, the load test shall be tested to engineer requirements and it can be as high as 3 times the working load of the pile. MLT can be performed by two methods. The first and conventional method is by arranging the cantilever blocks on top of the platform resting on the beams to provide reaction force acting on the pile. The second method on which we will be focusing is by constructing reaction anchors connecting to the beams so that the reaction force can be created by the action of a hydraulic jack. The big question is, when do we have to do MLT? Most of the pile foundation projects will it require MLT at least one time before the construction of other working piles. Until both the consultant and the designer satisfy with the results, then the piling works may begin. There are five main reasons that make MLT so important. MLT is a part of foundation's quality assurance. Moreover, MLT is done to ensure the pile could deliver its working capacity, to design the required pile length, to verify criteria to be used for the design of pile foundation and to determine the maximum settlement of the test pile. At the end of the test, we can expect some useful information resulting from MLT. The data we can gain are load settlement curve, permanent or plastic settlement, rebound value, load distribution along the pile length, and the mobilized unit skin friction and end bearing. Some might wonder which method of MLT is the best to be applied. To answer this question, let's compare the cantilever blocks method with the reaction anchor method. For methodology, cantilever block method will require us to arrange the blocks according to the design arrangement by using a crane. Meanwhile, for the reaction anchor method, the required number of reaction anchors will be installed and stressed to the test beams. The reaction anchor method will consume more time as we need to wait for the reaction anchors to achieve the required strength. There is no difference in results from both methods. But there are some differences if we test for sacrificial pile and working pile. If we test for sacrificial pile, the pile will be instrumented with strain gauges attached to the reinforcement bar and together with telltale extensometers on top and at the bottom of the test pile to record the settlement at both points. While for working pile, usually, there is no instrumentation attached to the bar. Because the sacrificial pile is no longer used after the test, we can test the pile up to 300% of the working capacity. But for the working pile, we can only test up to 200% of working capacity. Lastly, we can gain the loading distribution from the instrumented sacrificial pile. 
Different sites have different site areas. It is better to choose reaction and commented for a small site because it is much more difficult to manage the logistics of the cantilage blocks method in a small area. In case the test pile is located at any inclined ground, we might need to choose reaction anchor method due to the high risk of falling cantilage blocks on uneven ground. So, performing MLT by cantilage blocks method will impose a sizable risk compared to reaction anchor method, although there were safety precautions have been taken. And lastly, there is a limit in test load offered by cantilage block method. This is because the higher the test load, the higher the number of block layers which could somehow impose instability to the arranged cantilage blocks. For reaction anchor method, we can provide higher test loads as long as the anchor strengths and the test beams could provide the reaction force. For cantilage blocks method, the highest ever test load that has been done in Malaysia is 3,412 tons of force. And for reaction and committed, one set of test beams could extend up to 4,000 tons of force. Now, let's talk about the procedure to set up the test. First, we will install the reaction anchors in suitable numbers and depth as to provide the required reaction load. In order to do that, the position of the reaction anchor must be set out by a surveyor and mark with a pack. Then, we mobilize the drilling machine to the anchor position for drilling work. Care must be taken to ensure the position of the drilling rod is directly above the anchor point. Next, the temporary casing is driven to the land stratum or rock level after the verticality of the rod has been confirmed. Commence drilling work with a DTH hammer while flushing the borehole to the required depth. The anchor reinforcement is fabricated and unloaded to the bottom of the borehole. We will be using cement grout mixed from ordinary Portland cement and added with non shrink additives to fill the borehole by using grout tube. Lastly, the temporary casing will be extracted and the installation of reaction anchor has been completed. Before other apparatus can be set up, the selected test pile needs to be built up to about 0.3 meter above the EGL with a permanent casing. Cast a pile cap with mass concrete as per design. The top of the test pile must be level and flat as to avoid error during the test. Place the hydraulic jacks on the steel bearing plate on top of the pile head and concentrate them at the center of the pile. Place the test beams on top of the hydraulic jacks and supports and stress the strands of the reaction anchors to the beams. Install 4 dial gauge on each corner of the steel plate. Set up a temporary benchmark references on firm ground away from disturbance. Install a scale ruler on the steel plate above the pile head and lastly, set up a leveling instrument to manually check the settlement of the test pile. Now that we are done with setting up procedure, to carry out the testing works, we will load and unload the test pile according to the loading sequences and number of cycles specified by the engineer. For testing working pile, the number of load cycles usually needed is 2 cycles, but for testing the sacrificial pile, Three load cycles are needed to find the ultimate capacity of the pile. Here are the examples of two load cycles. Now, let's study how the testers collect the MLT data. First, record the time and date for the first loading. Next, we need to record the load applied, the readings of all dial gauges, and the label of pile heat reference frame, and temporary benchmark for manual checking. Lastly, we will proceed to the next loading and repeat all steps. Additional work will occur if the test pile is meant to be sacrificed because we need to take the strain reading from strain gauge installed inside the pile. After all data have been recorded, the tester will then interpret them before giving the end results to the client. 
In this video, I will briefly explain how the data are being interpreted. Before the test commences, the failure criterion will be determined. The failure criterion is intended as the maximum settlement the test file cannot exit when subjected to a certain load. Different consultants may use different failure criteria. This is one example of failure criteria that some people use and as I said, others may use it a little bit differently. The ultimate goal of instrumented MLT is to verify the PAL foundation design parameters that are skin friction factor and end bearing factor. Skin friction factor is calculated by using the formula maximum mobilized friction over average SPTN value. While for the end bearing factor, we will be using the formula maximum mobilized bearing over average SPTN value. To obtain the mobilized unit for skin friction and end bearing, strain gauges will be attached to the reinforcement bar and the level between the gauges will be determined according to the SPTN values from the SI. Each time a load is applied, the strain readings will be recorded and the mobilized unit is determined by these two formulas. And lastly, the skin friction and end bearing factors are determined by dividing the mobilized unit skin friction or end bearing with the average SPTN values. That is all from me. I hope you find this video useful. See ya!